Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. I'm still aggressively burning in my 4K OLED monitor through exclusively using it for productivity work. I'm now nine months into this experiment, so it's time for an update on burn-in. Again, just like the last update, not much has changed in how I've been using my MSI MPG 321URX QD OLED. We're still very much discussing a worst case scenario for OLED usage with maximum amounts of static content and minimum amounts of content consumption and gaming. Now, if you missed the last couple of updates, I'd recommend going back and checking out at least the initial video, just so you get an idea of the setup and why I've decided to use MSI's 4K 240Hz QD OLED gaming monitor as my workstation display. But basically, the idea here is to perform a real-world test of OLED longevity in the worst possible configuration, effectively burning in the display on purpose. I swapped my 32-inch 4K IPS LCD for this new QD OLED and changed nothing else about my setup, so no dark mode or screensavers or anything like that, and that's to see whether OLED monitors really can be used as LCD equivalent productivity displays long term. I use my monitor more than 8 hours a day, and sometimes that usage is continuous with no breaks for the display to turn off and rest. This leads to hours upon hours of static usage in applications like web browsers, the Microsoft Office Suite, including my personal favorite Excel, and production tasks like Adobe Premiere and Photoshop. With virtually no content consumption in my daily use of this display and zero gaming, this is not how we recommend using an OLED at all though it is a use case that has been perfectly fine for LCDs for a long time. After one month of usage, my 321URX had no signs of burn-in at all, which is as expected. At that point, I'd used the monitor for about 200 to 250 hours. After three months, I'd started to see faint signs of burn-in, and at that point, I'd used the display for approximately 650 to 750 hours with 71 panel compensation cycles. At six months, the monitor had hit 141 compensation cycles and between 1,200 and 1,500 hours of usage, at which point I noticed slightly to moderately worse burn-in across various areas of the panel. Now at nine months in, this is the state of play. The 321URX is reporting 224 compensation cycles, which is in line with my typical usage on a daily basis and is a linear increase over the last update. At this stage, I would estimate the panel has been used for between 2,000 and 2,300 hours, so we're still looking at between 9 and 10 hours of usage at 200 nits of brightness per compensation cycle. This is the equivalent of using the display for 8 hours a day every single day since I got it. The recommended rate for panel protect cycles is every four hours, so this is a particularly intense stress test. Not only is the panel being used in a worst case scenario for static content, it's also being used at a relatively high brightness level with no software mitigations to minimize burn-in, such as putting the display to sleep after a few minutes of inactivity, or while running the panel protect cycle half as often as is ideal. But this is all a very realistic use case. It's exactly how I was using an LCD before switching to OLED. In this video, I've made a couple of changes to the way I show the burn-in examples, which will hopefully make them easier to see on YouTube with its compression, though I still recommend watching this video at 4K. If you're still having trouble, I've made a much higher bitrate version available to download for our Patreon members, which has the level of clarity I've used for this analysis. Anyway, the focus of this comparison is going to be the three-month, six-month, and nine-month results, because we already know that after one month there was basically no burn-in. Again, we're focusing on the center of the display, which is where in previous months there was visible burn-in, a line down the center of the screen, most likely due to frequent use of side-by-side -side applications. There's actually a bit of good news here. Firstly, this vertical line is still only visible in mid to dark gray test patterns. It hasn't spread to other brighter tests, so I'm still only noticing this burn-in with similar types of content to previous months. Now, there are some apps that use a dark gray uniform background, such as Premiere, where this line is somewhat visible, but for the most part and across most situations, this type of burn-in is relatively difficult to notice during everyday usage. I also use side-by-side -side apps so frequently that the burn-in actually aligns with the content that I'm usually seeing on screen. The impact across the various subpixels is also relatively unchanged compared to previous months. When viewing darker colors, it's difficult to see any burn in with the red and blue subpixels. The green subpixel is more noticeably impacted and seems to be the primary contributor to the burn in we see in grayscale tests. After nine months, I haven't seen the red and blue subpixels becoming more affected. Again, these results are pretty similar to previous months. 
In fact, overall, I would say that as far as the vertical line is concerned, after nine months, this burn-in has actually improved. This is most evident when using the burn-in enhancement filter I used in the previous video, which adjusts the footage to more clearly show the differences and any impacts of burn-in. This is not how the monitor looks in real life. It's a higher contrast version for analysis purposes only, so don't freak out when the filter is being used at how bad it might appear. You really can't notice it like how the filter shows it. Anyway, I think in this footage, particularly viewing dark greys, that the line is less noticeable at nine months versus six months. This is especially true in the top third of the screen, but really across most of the central section, the nine month result is better to my eye than six months, despite being captured in exactly the same way. Comparing nine months to three months, I also think the nine month result isn't too bad, though whether the burn in is more noticeable than at three months depends on the exact grayscale test being used. This improvement could be due to the compensation cycle process actually working to reduce or mitigate burn-in over time. Obviously, it hasn't fixed the amount of burn-in, but to have this area improve, or at the very least, not get substantially worse, is I think a positive result for owners of OLEDs that are worried about burn-in. Certainly, I was expecting to see more burn-in in this area after nine months than what we're seeing here. Other aspects to the image are not as great. Taskbar burn-in, seen along the bottom edge of the screen, is usually slightly more noticeable comparing nine months to six months, and is much more noticeable comparing nine months to three months. This isn't always the case, and I did see the nine month image looking slightly better or equal to the six month image in some tests, but generally this part of the screen seems to be slowly degrading over time, and certainly comparing results after 2200 hours versus 700 hours of use, it's obvious that having the taskbar visible at all times is not good for OLED image retention. With that said, in actual use, this burn-in is not noticeable because, well, I'm using applications all of the time, so the taskbar is on screen and thus the burn-in is obscured. Even in the occasional full screen app or when viewing a full screen video, it's pretty hard to tell this area of the screen has degraded unless you're viewing specific sorts of full screen dark uniform content. So at least for now, I think this level of burn-in is tolerable. Another area I think has been impacted slightly more after nine months is the area to the right of the vertical line. The most recent footage shows the screen is a bit more plotchy and less uniform in this area compared to previous months, again most noticeable when viewing mid to dark grey test images. I wouldn't say it's degraded substantially or anything, but a small decrease in uniformity. As for screen brightness, exactly the same result as last update, with peak brightness hitting 243 nits. Even though some aspects to burn-in are holding steady or improving, possibly due to image protection features, brightness so far has not been impacted. Theoretically, brightness will reduce over time due to panel aging, but we'll have to wait to see any impact there. Overall, I think this is a relatively positive update on the burn-in front after nine months of heavy static content usage, or around 2,000 to 2,300 hours of total use. As we saw in the previous update, there are visible signs of burn-in on my panel, but the level of degradation between six months and nine months has been relatively minimal. Taskbar burn-in has held steady or gotten slightly worse, uniformity is also slightly worse, but the burned-in vertical line has actually improved and become slightly less noticeable. Small changes all around, but nothing too drastic after an additional 800 hours. As things stand, burn-in is not having a significant impact on my daily usage of this monitor, and it's close to, though not quite, a non-issue. I can spot the burn-in in some edge case applications with large uniform areas of dark grey, but it's pretty uncommon and rarely distracting. I think that's a pretty good result, given I'm stressing the crap out of this display, I'm using it in absolutely the worst case realistic scenario you could think of, and my usage patterns equate to displaying 8 hours of virtually static content every single day. Where we are currently at with 2,000 to 2,300 hours of total use is the equivalent of eight hours a day, five days a week for about a year. Burn-in with OLED is directly related to hours of use and is cumulative. So if you only use static apps for four hours a day, you should expect to see your lifespan double to what I'm suggesting here. Mixing in dynamic content between periods of static content usually won't improve the burn-in results. It's all related to the cumulative number of hours displaying the same static content on screen. You should also see the lifespan of your OLED panel improve if you took literally any steps to mitigate burn-in, none of which I'm doing for this test. Running at a lower brightness and using dark mode will extend the lifespan because burn-in is correlated to brightness output. Setting the display to sleep after a few minutes of inactivity will reduce burn-in because you'll lower the amount of cumulative hours displaying static content. Minimizing the taskbar windows, though that is annoying, will help reduce burn-in in that area of the screen because the same static image isn't always going to be shown. 
But if I'm honest, I was expecting to see more burn-in after nine months. The levels I'm seeing right now are still very tolerable, and with realistic, sensible usage, I think most people won't run into proper burn-in problems within the first 12 to 18 months of usage on this sort of QDL LED panel. Maybe some light burn-in here or there, a few edge cases where you'll notice it, but nothing that ruins the experience. And this is an ongoing test, of course. If we see similar results to this after 12 months, the relatively safe lifespan of OLED will push out even further. These results are even more positive for people primarily using an OLED for gaming or content consumption. I haven't seen anything so far that would indicate people primarily using this sort of monitor for gaming will suffer horrific burn-in after several years. Even for mixed use, it's looking reasonable at this stage. Getting two years of good usage out of an OLED though, Probably not going to cut it when we're talking about high-end $1,000 monitors. Ideally, you'd want this sort of monitor to last for at least five years, if not way longer. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not planning on stopping this test anytime soon. So we'll keep monitoring things and see how long it can last. So anyway, that's it for this one. We'll have another update to the burn-in results, probably at 12 months or so. So expect that in the early parts of 2025. If you do want to support Monitors Unbox directly and all of the testing that we do here, including burning in monitors on purpose, then please consider supporting us via our Patreon account. You get lots of benefits if you do sign up through there. Or alternatively, you can support the channel directly by grabbing some of our merch, like this stealthy OLED design available in a t-shirt and hoodie that you see here. You can tell or your friends that you've got an OLED, which seems to be a thing that most people do anyway, but now you can do it in t-shirt form. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.